Good morning. Welcome to the MyDUR Government Account Annual Refresher Webinar. This webinar is hosted by the State and Local Finance Division of the Wisconsin Department of Revenue. My name is Sarah Regenauer. I'm the Local Government Services Bureau Director with SLF. Thank you all for joining us. Today, we'll go over MyDUR Government Account, which we call MyDUR Gov. We'll walk through the various parts of the system, practice filing a form, and at the end, we'll have time for some questions and answers. To use GoToWebinar, click the orange arrow to expand your panel. Under the handout section, we have a PDF of the PowerPoint presentation if you want to download it. To ask a question during the webinar, use the panel and type your question in the area that says, enter a question for staff. We'll work to respond to your questions throughout the webinar. We'll also post a recording with the questions and answers from today's presentation on the DOR training page about a week after this webinar. Joining us today are various staff who work with MyDORGov. They'll be answering your questions throughout the webinar. Now, I'll turn it over to Lynn Oldenburg, who will walk you through the system. Lynn? Thank you, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lynn Oldenburg. I'm an auditor with the State and Local Finance Division at DOR. In this webinar, we'll provide a detailed overview of MyDORGov, including getting started and accessing the system, the homepage dashboard and what you'll find there, how to update your contact information, managing your own access, we'll show you how to request an office or request access, managing others to file on your behalf, which includes approving, denying, or removing access. How to navigate the system. We'll walk you through filing a form and show you how to view historical filings and notifications, and how to reset your account. This is needed if you use multiple email addresses. Then we'll go over some information specific to the PA 551, the 2023 personal property report that's due July 1st. We'll also provide you with additional resources and how to find online help. My DOR Gov is the Wisconsin Department of Revenues or DOR's e-filing system for local government officials, such as municipal clerks and treasurers or county clerks and treasurers and other representatives like a lake or sanitary district representative or a CPA who help file reports for a municipality or an assessor. In this system, you can e-file your required DOR forms or reports and view previously filed forms and notifications. Most of these forms filed through MyDORGov are filed with the State and Local Finance Division. Also in this system, you can maintain your contact information and manage your access. We want to clarify that DOR also has My Tax Account or MTA. That's the system where you file sales and use tax or withholding tax forms and pay certain taxes or fees, like the $150 Tax Increment District or TID administrative fee if you have a TID in your municipality. MTA is a separate system and we will not discuss it in this webinar. If you need a refresher in my tax account, visit our website's training page to register for a my tax account webinar or view one that was recorded. If you represent a manufacturer or file M forms in my tax account, you may want to look for the My Tax Account for Manufacturers webinar. Today, we're focusing on My DOR Gov. So, who should be in this webinar? Municipal clerks and treasurers, county clerks and treasurers, special district representatives, and accountants or auditors 
who file forms for office holders. Assessors may also want to sit in for this webinar since there will be questions specific to the PA 551-2023 Personal Property Value Report. If you are a Register of Deeds, you don't have anything to file in my DOR Gov, so you won't see anything related to your job during this webinar. If you are a real property lister and you file the statement of assessment for your municipalities using the file transfer option, you also don't need access to my DOR Gov. However, a property lister may request access from a municipal clerk to file the SOA on their behalf or request access to file the open book and board of review calendar. We'll go over how to request access and file forms later in this webinar. Let's start with accessing the system. On the DOR website, go to the Governments tab. Click the My DOR Gov icon in the nice blue box at the top of the page. The first time you enter the system, you'll see the email authorization page. Access to My DOR Gov remains in effect for 30 days. If you don't access the system for 30 days, or access the system from a different computer, you'll be prompted to complete the email authorization process again. Provide your email address and click Log In. You'll receive an email with a link to access MyDORGov, which takes you to the MyDORGov homepage. If you do not receive an email within a few minutes, check your junk or spam folders. You might have to add a spam exception for at wisconsin.gov and then try entering your email again. If you have problems accessing MyDORGov, try accessing it using another browser. For example, if you have issues using Edge, try using Chrome. If you want to access the system using Chrome, but the email with the link is in Microsoft Outlook, copy and paste the link into the Chrome browser rather than just clicking the link. If this is the first time you log into my DOR Gov, you'll see a user summary window. Enter information to create your user profile and save. The email address you enter in the user summary section will be the email address in your user profile, which is linked to my DOR Gov. You are now on the My DOR Government homepage showing a no assigned offices message which contains instructions on how to get started follow the instructions to request an office or to request access after you make your request and your account is active this is what the home page dashboard looks like the home page provides access to all the services you need on one page and was designed for user-friendly navigation. Periodically, we'll place a system-wide message in a box at the top of the home page. In this example, we've placed a notification about an upcoming webinar. Let's start navigating MyDORGov by clicking User Information. On the user information page, you can see your contact information, manage access requests if you are an office holder, and request access to file on behalf of the office holder. To review or update your contact information, click Edit User Profile. You can update your name, phone, fax number, or address. You will not be able to update your email address. If you need to update your email address, contact dor at lgs 
at wisconsin.gov. If you are an assessor, go to Manage Users in the eReader system to update your email. If you are assessment staff, work with your assessor to update your access. After making your updates, click Save. Just a note, you'll see this pop-up, this window pop-up the first time you log in each calendar year. You can enter updates and select Save to continue or just click Save if there are no changes. If you are a municipal official and need to consolidate multiple profiles, create a secondary email address, disable or deactivate a user's profile, contact DOR at lgs at wisconsin.gov for assistance. Coming soon, we will be releasing the new SL-302 form that you will use to update your contact information. This form replaces our biannual contact information update for municipalities and counties we previously sent to you in a spreadsheet via email. The new contact information update form will be an easier way for you to provide DOR your contact updates. And the best part, this form will be available all year long. On the user information page, there are two panels below the user profile. The left panel contains your office summary information. If you are an office holder, such as a municipal clerk, treasurer, or clerk treasurer, that office should be listed here. As you can see, our example user holds five offices, clerk for the town of Albany, clerk for the city of Monroe, treasurer for Green County, clerk for the town of Albany, and special district representative for the Stitzer Sanitary District. Remember DOR grants office permissions. If you see an office you no longer hold, you can request to have it removed. When you click the X, you are asked to confirm the office removal. When you confirm, an email is sent to DOR to process your request. This office is moved to the pending office removals section until DOR reviews and removes the office. If an office you hold is not listed, you can submit a request to DOR by clicking Request Office. DOR grants office permissions for office holders, which include municipal or county clerk, municipal or county treasurer, municipal clerk treasurer, special district representative, technical college representative, and utility company representative. To request an office, you must first select the office type from the drop-down menu. Enter the district name or code and select the district. You can also enter the name of the prior office holder. If you don't know the prior office holder, you can leave this field blank. Enter an explanation in the comments field. You can click cancel at any time to return to your user information page. Clicking cancel cancels your office holder request. We won't do that today. We will click send. This sends an email to DOR to process your office request. You can see your request under the Pending Office Requests section on the left side panel. After DOR processes your office request, you'll receive an email notifying you of the decision. If approved, you can log into My DOR and begin filing forms. If denied, We'll provide contact information for you to follow up. Remember, only request an office if you hold the actual office. If you're just helping to file a form for a district and need access to that district's form, 
you must submit an access request to the office holder, which we'll discuss next. The right side panel under the user profile contains your access summary. The elected or appointed office holder grants access permissions, not DOR again, DOR only grants office permissions. For example, if you are a county treasurer and want to file the statement of assessment for one of your municipalities using MyDOR.gov, you would have to request access to file the SOA from the municipal clerk. So in this example, the municipal clerk who is the office holder would grant you the access you are requesting. Reminder, if you file the SOA using the file transfer option, you don't need access to my DOR.gov. There may be several sections on the right side panel under your user profile. There is an access to file on behalf of, which lists the offices or other users that you are authorized to file on behalf of. There is also others authorized to file on your behalf. This is for office holders only and shows the users you gave permission to file forms on your behalf. There may also be pending sections that displays when there are pending requests waiting to be reviewed. In each section, the districts are sorted by district code. As we mentioned earlier, you must make an access request when you are not the office holder for a district and you need to file a form on their behalf. Common examples of this are deputy roles, staff roles in a municipal or county office, assessor or other representatives filing on behalf of a district or company office holder, such as a CPA. Office holders still have access to all their forms, even if they grant access to another user to file on their behalf. To request access from an office holder, click Request Access. Choose the office from the Select Office dropdown. Enter the district name or code. Click the district name. You can provide an explanation for your request in the comments field. This request will go to the office holder. Again, you can click cancel at any time to return to your user information page. We'll click send to submit the request. This sends an email to the office holder to process your access request. Your request will be under pending, requests to file on behalf of, until the office holder takes action approving or denying your request. After the office holder processes your request, you will receive an email notifying you of the decision. If approved, you can log into MyDOR.gov and begin filing the forms you have been approved to access. The district office will now be available on your home page and will be listed under the Access to File on Behalf of on this page. If the office holder granted you access to file specific forms and you need to change or add to the list of forms to file, contact the office holder directly so they can modify your access. We will show this shortly. As an office holder, you can approve or deny the access requests you receive from those who want to file on your behalf. We currently have a pending request from Deborah Sample to file on our behalf for the clerk office in the city of Monroe. To process this request, click the pencil icon. You can review the requester information. Deborah is our example. As a municipal clerk, you have access to file all the forms that are listed here. You can deny her request by clicking deny 
at the bottom, or approve her request by either selecting all forms, giving her access to all current and future forms, or selecting the specific forms you want her to file. In this example, we'll give access to all forms and click Approve. Deborah will now show up under the Others Authorized to File on Your Behalf section. To review access, you can use the information user information icon to view the forms you have access to or the forms others have access to file on your behalf. For Sarah Sample, who is the clerk for the Town of Spring Grove, listed under Access to File on behalf of, she can file quite a few forms on her behalf. For Lynn Sample, listed under Access to File on behalf of, she just has access to file one form, the PE 300 TID Annual Report. If you're an office holder and have users listed in this Others Authorized to File on Your Behalf section, you can adjust their access at any time. Use the pencil icon for this. For Andrea Sample, who has access to all forms, you could select all current and future forms, or you can select specific forms you want her to file. For this example, we'll only give her access to the Statement of Assessment and then click Update. If you click the info icon for Andrea Sample, you should, you should see she now only has access to the Statement of Assessment. The last item we'll show you on this right side panel is how to remove an access. You can remove your access or another user's access to file on your behalf. Under the Access to File on Behalf of section, if you see an access that you no longer need, you can remove it by clicking the X. You are asked to confirm the access removal. When you confirm, your access is removed immediately. Under the Others Authorized to File on Your Behalf section, as an office holder, you can remove someone's access to file on your behalf. It's a similar process. Just click the X and confirm. Their access is immediately removed. There is another button at the top right of the user information screen that assessors can access. Manage software tokens. If you are not an assessor, this button is grayed out. If you are an assessor and want to use direct electronic filing through your CAMA system, you need a token which acts as an authorization code to provide filing access. This token does not allow your software vendor to view or manage your account. To get a token, click Manage Software Tokens. Click the plus in the blue bar labeled Tokens. Enter a name for your token. This can be any name that will help you identify this token. Click Create to generate the token. Give this token to your CAMA provider. Once entered into your CAMA system, you can use direct electronic filing. You should refer to your CAMA provider for specific instructions on how to provide them the token. Each token has an expiration date. When it expires, create a new token and delete the expired one. To delete a token, click the X to the left of the token name. Then click Yes. This permanently deletes the token. On the user information page and other pages throughout the site, you'll see the retractable menu and 
the clickable capital icon, which help you navigate through the site. Use the retractable menu in the top right to easily navigate to other pages. From this menu, you can return to the main menu or home page or navigate to other pages, form filing, historical filings, notifications, and online help. The page you are currently on is grayed out in the menu. Make a selection or close the menu. You can also get back to the MyDORGov homepage by clicking the capital icon in the upper left. On the home page, you can click one of the boxes to go to another page, or if you'd like to return to DOR's website, click the R logo in the top left. Now, let's take a look at the form filing page, the second box on the MyDORGov account page, which lists your active forms and their due dates. The form filing box on the home page lists the most current forms available for you to file. Once you're on the form filing page, if you would like to view a list of all your forms, even those that are not active, click Online Services, which takes you to our government eServices online filing webpage, where you can download filing reminders for each form. Let's go back to the form filing page. At the top of the form filing page is a district office box. If you have more than one district or office, use the drop down menu to select the forms associated with that office. In the menu bar at the top, you can choose a specific form, a filing status, or search for a specific item. The table lists your active forms, including their filing status, date filed, and due date. Since most of you have multiple forms to file throughout the year, it's easy to quickly see where a form is in the filing process. Whether you already filed the form and the date you filed it, or whether you just saved the form and still need to submit it. Let's sort the table by due dates so we know which form is due next. For instance, you can see here that the MFR CT form was filed March 31st, 2024, and that form PA551, the Personal Property Value Report, is not filed and is due July 1st. Now, we'll show you how to submit a form and the common features within each form. Once your profile is created and your access has been approved, you can e-file forms. Make sure the correct district or office is listed at the top of the page before selecting a form. Let's click a form name to open the form. The first page of each form in MyDORGov looks similar. On the top left, you can view the general instructions before you get started. There may also be a link to detailed form instructions. We provide contact information on the right in case you have form questions. The phone numbers listed take you directly to staff who can answer form-specific questions. There's also a link for general online filing help. When you're ready, select Start Filing to begin. Once you're in the form, a few things are consistent across all MyDORGov forms. Left blue panel within each form provides a menu. To hide or show this menu, click the icon at the top. You can save, submit, print, or exit your form from here. You can print your form at any time 
which saves a PDF version of the form. When you click Print, depending on your browser, the PDF may open in a new tab or provide a prompt at the bottom of your screen. We're in Chrome, so it opens in a new tab. You can also see the contact information for questions related to your form you are working on. Click Online Filing Help to open another tab and go to your Using My DOR Gov page. There are common questions and videos for My DOR Gov available on this help page. Last, in the left loop in the blue panel, you'll see a few symbols you may see throughout the form. Be alert for these as you complete the form. For instance, a green help bubble will provide additional information. Coming back to the form, on the right there is a gray panel which typically provides additional instruction. In this form, we have a link to the detailed form instructions. This stays the same as you click to different sections of this form. Sometimes there will be different information in this gray panel depending on the form. Fields indicated by a red asterisk are required fields. A value must be entered, so enter zero if there is no value. To navigate through each form, click Next in the upper right corner to continue. You can also navigate using the menu style listing at the top. This list lets you know if you completed a page. You'll see a check mark in that section's drop down list or if there are errors or warnings on a page. The last page in each form is the Prepare Signature page. On most forms, the information from your user profile is already filled in for you. Enter any missing or incorrect information. If there is any missing or incorrect information, you may want to view your MyDORGov profile and make any needed updates. You can attach files from this play from this page if applicable. Some of our forms have attachment boxes throughout them. To attach a file, click the paper icon. Click Choose a File. Select the appropriate file. You will see the name appear here, then click Start Upload. Your file now appears in the form as attached. You cannot attach a file with special characters in the name. If you try, it will not attach. If you selected an incorrect file, click the minus sign to remove it. And repeat the steps above to choose a new file. You must read and check yes for the signature statement. If your form has errors or warnings, they appear in the table at the bottom of the page. You need to fix all errors before you can submit the form. Click the arrow in each row to go to the section with the error. Note, if you have a warning, you can still submit your form. If the warning asks you to verify your entry, type an explanation in the comments box at the top of the page. DOR encourages you to enter comments. This may save a phone call from an auditor verifying your form's information. Let's click the first arrow for required enter zero if the value is zero. You go directly to the page with the error and you can see the error in the field symbol. After you correct all errors, you can click Submit in the left blue panel.
and then the confirmation page appears. Now that we know how to file a form, let's look at the historical filings page, the third box in the My DOR Gov account page, which comes in handy when you want to see previously submitted forms for your district or office. On this page, you can review and print forms filed for the current year, plus forms filed in the past three years. Clerks and treasurers have access to view forms their municipality or county filed. Anyone who has access to file on an office holder's behalf can also see the filed forms they have access to. When you open the page, the drop-down menus are set to all, so you can see all the forms you have access to. Make a selection in the drop-down to narrow your search. You can also sort by clicking the arrows in each column. Let's take a look. You can view forms by your district office, form listed by number and name, filing year. You can also enter in a keyword in the search box. You can use one or all of the filters to find what you're looking for. Let's select clerk in the district office dropdown. Now the forms listed only include those the municipal clerk is assigned to file. Let's use the form dropdown to select PE 300 TID annual report. Well, I guess we're going to look at the statement of taxes. Now the page only shows the statement of taxes reports that were previously filed. To narrow the results further, you can select a specific year. To view a form, click the form name link to view the form. Make sure your browser is set up to allow pop-ups from the DOR website because a new tab opens. From this page, you can download a copy of the form, print a copy of the form, or save it as a PDF. Let's use the search field to look for a form. Let's enter tax to see which forms appear. Now the list includes several different forms that include tax in the name. Click the X to remove the search criteria. The forms table includes the form year, the district office, form number, form name, attachments, and date filed. You can use the arrows to sort any of the columns. We'll sort by form number. Now the list is in alphanumeric order by form number. If a filed form included attachments, you'll see view. In the attachments column, click the link to see the attachments for that form. A dialog box opens. If there are multiple attachments, each is listed individually. Click the link to open the attachment. Like with our forms, a new tab opens. You can now download, print, or save a PDF of the attachment. We'll close the attachment to return to the historical filings page. Click the X on the tab then the X to close the attachments dialog box. Next, let's return to the home page by clicking the capital icon. Let's look at the notifications page. Here, you'll see important notices and reminders from DOR. In the box on the home page, 
you can see how many new messages you received since you last visited the page. When you click the Notifications box, you can see the list of notices DOR sent to your role in the past three years. If you only have access to file on behalf of an office holder, you will not see the notices the office holder received. Keep in mind, some DOR messages are not listed here, so we recommend signing up for our email lists. We'll show you how to do that later. Like the historical filing page, when you open the page, the drop-down menus are set to all. This way, you see all the notices you received. You can change the drop-downs to filter your results. Let's change the year to 2024 so we can view the messages received this year. You can also check View New Messages Only to see the new messages since you last visited this page. You can sort the list by date, district, message, or the attachments column. Let's sort by the message name. Now the list of notices is sorted in alphabetical order. To view a message, click the link in the message column. A dialog box opens with the message. Click the X to close the message. If a message has attachments, click View. A new dialog box opens. Click the link to open the attachment you want to view. Like on the Historical Filings page, a new tab opens where you can download, print, or save a PDF of the attachment. To get back to the Notifications page, click the X on the tab, then click the X to close the Attachments dialog box. Let's go back to the home page to look at the other options. Online Help opens a web page on a new tab with a lot of useful information. Under Filing System, you'll find links to our common questions and how-to videos. The Contact Us section lists the contacts based on the type of user. In the Resources section, there are links to download filing reminders, links to view the local government calendar, and recent and prior year news, and to sign up for our email lists. We highly recommend that you subscribe to the DOR eNews. We notify subscribers of due dates, payment dates, law changes, forms now available, for example, when the new SL302 contact information form is available, and other helpful information. If you're a county official, email otas at wisconsin.gov with your request to join the list. Otherwise, click Subscribe to DOR eNews. Check the lists you'd like to subscribe to. You may subscribe to more than one. There are many helpful lists available. Then enter your email in the address box and click Subscribe. You'll receive an email to confirm. We will not enter an email for this webinar. To get back to the MyDORGov homepage, close the Online Help tab by clicking the Tabs X. We have one more option, the last box on the MyDORGov account homepage, Reset Account to Review. Only use this option if you would like to sign out and log in with another email address. This should be uncommon. You only need to request reset, I'm sorry, reset your account if you have multiple email addresses. For example, you want to log in with a different email address because you have a work email address and a personal email address. Or you use different email addresses to access the system because you have multiple office holder positions you want to keep separate. When you click this box, you see a pop-up window asking if you are sure you want to log out of your account. 
If you would like to sign out and log in with another email address, click Yes. Otherwise, click Cancel. When you select Yes, it logs you out of MyDOR.gov with your current email address. This allows you to click the MyDOR.gov icon to log in with a different email address. You'll receive a new link by email and you'll be able to access the system. We're going to click Cancel and return to the home page. Okay, we just completed our walkthrough of the MyDOR.gov system. Before I turn this back over to Sarah, I want to thank you all for joining us today. Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Lynn. Reach out to us with questions at the listed contact information. If you need help or are having system issues, use these help links. If you'd like to watch this webinar again or have someone else watch it, we'll post the recorded version on our website within a week. We'll also post the questions and answers from the webinar as the PDF. Both will be on the training page. How do you get to DOR's training page? On DOR's website, click Training at the bottom of the page. This brings you to the DOR training page. The items for this webinar will be listed under recently recorded webinars. To view older webinars and training videos, scroll down to Training by Topic and click My DOR Gov Webinars under Local Governments. Thanks. This completes today's webinar. Thank you all for joining us. If you have any additional questions after the webinar, use the email address on the screen to reach out to us. The email address is also in the presentation. As you exit the webinar, please take a few moments to fill out a brief survey. It will open in a new tab. Thank you and have a great day.